Hi friends, in this video we will see why the world is betting big on the EVs. So we will see if the EV hype is it justified. There is a lot of buzz around electric vehicles. You hear about Tesla, Ola, BYD and Tata and now Mahindra and Mahindra EVs. Governments are giving subsidies, battery companies like Excite, Amar Raja, Ola Electric are spending billions to build lithium ion manufacturing plants and it feels like the whole world is moving towards EVs. But why what has changed suddenly? Why are countries, investors, automakers all in on electric mobility? Is it just a trend, a hype or is it something deeper? So in this first video of the EV investing series, I'll explain the seven key forces behind this global EV push and why this shift is not just about climate but also about economics, strategy and power. I'll also explain how this foundation in the EVs will help you understand EV investing much better in the coming videos. So let's start with the most obvious, the climate change. Almost every major economy has made net zero commitments. The EU wants to be climate neutral by 2050 with net zero greenhouse gas emissions. Under Joe Biden, US had rejoined the Paris Agreement. The aim of this agreement is to contain the global warming by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Trump administration has chosen to withdraw from the same but most states in US still say we will want to pursue the climate goals. Here in India our aim is to go net zero by 2070 but we have aggressive short term targets as well. We want to generate 50% of our electricity needs by 2030 from non-fossil sources. Goal is to be able to generate 500 gigawatts of power from the renewable sources like solar, wind, hydro and nuclear energy by 2030. How do we make progress on our net zero commitments? Well, the answer lies in the ICE or internal combustion engine vehicles that most of us drive today. Cars, trucks, autos, two-wheelers. Transport accounts for about 25% of global CO2 that is carbon dioxide emissions. So if you want to cut emissions fast, transport is the easiest place to start, especially cars and buses running on petrol or diesel. So here comes the savior, the electric vehicles. They aren't just slightly better, they can actually reduce life cycle emissions by up to 60 to 70 percent, especially if the electricity is coming from renewable sources. That's why some governments are now banning petrol diesel vehicle sales in the next 10 to 15 years and giving tax breaks and subsidies to the EV buyers. So yes, climate is the trigger, but it is only the start. The second reason for EV push is the stupendous progress made in the battery technology. Now earlier EVs were a rich man's toy, expensive, limited range and a nightmare to charge. But something dramatic has changed in the last 10 years. Battery prices have fallen from around 1200 per kilowatt hour to under 130 per kilowatt hour. That's almost a 90% drop in just 10 years. And that's the real game changer. It made EVs affordable for the masses. The true tipping point is when EVs reach cost parity, meaning the total cost of owning and running an EV becomes equal or even cheaper than a petrol or diesel vehicle. In markets like China, that point has already been reached for many vehicle segments. In India, for commercial fleets like electric three-wheelers, taxis and buses, EVs are already cheaper to run compared to diesel alternatives. So what I mean by this is even though they are costlier to buy, they are actually cheaper to run cheaper in the long run. So for businesses, it's not just an eco-friendly decision anymore. It's an economically smart decision. And remember, the battery technology is still evolving. Batteries are still becoming better, lighter, faster charging and cheaper every year. The cost advantage of EVs is only going to grow stronger from here. To understand why people said no to EVs earlier, just think about how painful charging used to be in those days. Charging an EV used to take 6 to 12 hours. Imagine waiting overnight just to drive 150 kilometers the next day. 
that was really frustrating. There were hardly any charging stations, no chargers at highways, malls or offices. Even if you found one, chargers had different plugs and not all chargers worked with all EVs. Plus many chargers were offline, broken or under maintenance. Charging an EV felt like treasure hunting except there was no treasure. Thankfully this is changing fast. Today we have DC fast chargers that can top up your EV in just about 15 to 30 minutes. We have charging stations at malls, highways and office parks. Government incentives and private investments are rapidly expanding the EV charging network. Standardized charging plugs are becoming common, making life easier for EV owners. In short, EVs are no longer a rich man's toy. Slowly, they are becoming the smart choice for everyone, for businesses, for individuals and for the planet. Third reason why governments are embracing EVs and this is a big one. Energy independence and a fresh wave of opportunities in local manufacturing. There's a geopolitical layer here that most people miss. Take India, we import over 85% of our crude oil and that's a huge pressure on our trade deficit as well as foreign exchange. What if we could power vehicles using electricity generated within our own country using solar, wind or even hydro? That's what EVs make possible. You shift the fuel dependency from global oil to local electricity and that's a powerful thing for any country. Plus EVs open up whole new ecosystem for local manufacturing. Batteries, motors, chargers, even control software and electronics can be manufactured here. That's why we are seeing massive investments and job creation in this space. And that's the reason why we launched its PLI scheme to promote domestic production of advanced batteries and key EV components. So it's not just about going green, at least not anymore. It's about making India Atmanirbhar, self-reliant in both mobility and energy. It's also about attracting investment, building industries and creating jobs right here at home. If you have been with me so far, you may be interested in our flagship course on one of the sunrise sectors, which is semiconductors. When some of us hear the word semiconductors, we think too technical, not for me. But smart investors know this. Semiconductors are the new oil. From smartphones to AI, EVs to defense, cloud computing to modern healthcare, chips power everything today. Global investors who spotted this early made serious wealth from companies like Nvidia, TSMC, MediaTek, Qualcomm, SK Hynix, Samsung and Applied Materials. These are big names now and have turned into multi-baggers over the last decade or so. Now here is the exciting part. India is entering this game right now. Government has a massive outlay of 10 billion US dollars for Semicon India program. That's easily the highest incentive announced for any sector here in India. Big players like the Tatas, Adanis, Vedanta, HCL and some smaller ones too like CG Power, Keynes, Dixon are all eyeing this opportunity. They are setting up chip manufacturing, packaging and design hubs. So we spent nearly two months researching and breaking down this complex industry and then built this course that explains it all simply and clearly from an investor's angle. You learn how the chip manufacturing, packaging and design industry works, where India fits in, which Indian and global stocks are worth tracking and how to avoid the hype manage the risks and spot the real opportunity in this sector. Check the link to our course on semiconductors in the description or in the pinned comment below. Thank you. Now we have come to the fourth reason why EVs are here to stay. The auto industry is being completely rewritten. It is being completely reset. If you think EVs are just like petrol cars but run on a battery, think again. They are fundamentally different machines altogether. Let me explain. They have fewer moving parts, no gearbox or transmission. They receive software updates over the air just like the smartphones. They can use AI driven battery management systems and they come loaded with advanced telematics and connected features. EVs are basically computers on wheels. What this means is new age companies like Tesla, BYD, Rivian and Ola Electric, many of whom are not primarily automakers but technology companies. 
some of them are even software companies have a real shot at competing with 100 year old auto giants like Ford, Toyota and General Motors. The barriers to entry have become lower but the tech game is higher and the legacy players they are in catch up mode. Volkswagen has committed a massive 180 billion euros over the five years for EVs and digital transformation. General Motors has pledged to stop making petrol and diesel cars by 2035. Ford is investing billions to convert plants and roll out EVs under the Mustang, F-150 and Explorer brands. Here in India, auto majors like Hyundai, Mahindra and Mahindra are investing heavily on technology to come up with credible EV offerings of their own electric cars that can appeal to the masses. And they have already come up with a few EV models which are looking great. Legacy players like Bajaj Auto and Hero Motor Corp are doing the same with two-wheelers to compete with new age companies like Ola Electric and Ether Energy. Again, the automobile majors here are being threatened by startups by these technology firms. So the shift to EVs is not just an upgrade, it's a reset. Just like smartphones disrupted Nokia and Blackberry, EVs are redefining what it means to be a car company or a two-wheeler manufacturer. Fifth reason why EV adoption is now a national priority, the global EV supply chain race. This is where things go beyond environment and economy. This is strategic. Batteries are the new oil. And to make batteries, you need a handful of critical minerals. Lithium, cobalt, nickel, rare earth elements like neodymium and diosporium. And today, China controls over 70% of the global EV battery supply chain. From mining and refining to battery cell production and assembly. That's why countries like the US, European Union and India are now racing to reduce their dependence on China. They are trying to partner with lithium rich nations like Australia, Chile, Bolivia and Argentina. They are building local refining and processing facilities to reduce imports. They are also launching incentive programs to boost domestic battery manufacturing. US has passed the Inflation Reduction Act. The European Union has introduced the Critical Raw Materials Act and India is rolling out PLI schemes for battery and mineral processing. This is no longer just a tech revolution, it's a resource war. Because if you control battery production, you control EV manufacturing. And if you control EVs, you shape the future of mobility, which in turn shapes a country's economy. In the 20th century, global influence was defined by access to oil. Nations fought wars, forged alliances and reshaped geopolitics around it. If you remember, Iraq attacked oil-rich Kuwait and US was quick to retaliate. In the 21st century, the same kind of strategic importance given to oil earlier is now being shifted to battery materials and EV supply chains. So this is why investing in EV raw materials, mining and processing companies, not just car makers, is becoming one of the smartest strategic bets of this decade. Sixth big reason why EV adoption is accelerating. Charging infrastructure is no longer a barrier. Back in 2016, if you ask someone to consider an EV, the most common question people asked was, where will I charge it? That was a real concern, but fast forward to 2025, and that question is mostly solved, at least in developed and urban markets. Just look at the numbers. China now has over 1.2 million public charging points, the largest EV charging network in the world. The United States has committed $7.5 billion to expand its charging network under the bipartisan infrastructure law. India has announced EV corridors along the key national highways to enable long distance EV travel. We have PM E-Drive scheme, EV Mitra scheme, earlier we had FAME2 scheme to expand electric vehicle charging infrastructure nationwide. And it's not just governments, private companies like Tata Power, Charge Zone and Ionage are rapidly building fast charging networks across cities and highways. Even fuel retailers like Indian Oil, Bharat Petroleum and HP are setting up charging stations at petrol bunks turning every fuel stop into a future EV stop. 
It is claimed that around 18,000 petrol pumps run by these public sector oil majors have EV charging facilities. That's 20% of the total 89,000 fuel stations in our country. Charging, which was once seen as the biggest bottleneck, is now becoming a competitive advantage. Charging networks today are like telecom towers in the 2000s. Whoever builds early and builds dense owns a major slice of the future EV economy. It's not just about cars anymore. It's about energy access, customer lock-in and recurring revenue. Over time, high utilization charging hubs could become like today's petrol pumps. Steady cash generating assets. Companies who can control land and grid access and who can build fast charging stations can build long-term recurring cash flow. Hence, oil companies like HP, Bharat Petroleum, Indian Oil and EV OEMs like Tesla, Tata Motors, Ola Electric, Aether Energy and charging companies like Tata Power, Charge Zone and Static. They are all invested in building charging infrastructure and it is fast expanding. For urban users and commercial fleets at least, charging access is now far easier, faster and more reliable. And that's a big deal because it directly addresses the number one fear most EV users have had, range anxiety. The fear of running out of charge with no station in sight. And as charging infrastructure improves, that anxiety fades and EV adoption rises. Now let's talk markets. The seventh and final reason why EVs are hot right now. The financial markets are betting on the future, not the past. In 2020, Tesla became more valuable than Toyota, Volkswagen, GM and Ford all combined. People said it was overvalued and what market saw was software advantages, massive future growth potential and network effects, the kind that helps a company grow faster, earn higher margins and face less competition as it scales. Similarly, BYD now outsells Tesla in EVs and its stock has exploded. This shows that financial markets reward those companies who are building for the future, not necessarily the companies which have the most cars sold last year. And this extends beyond car makers, battery makers like cattle and LG chemicals, charging companies, specialty chemical firms, EV software platforms, all of these are part of next generation mobility value chain and all of them are investable opportunities we'll explore in the future episodes. Because EVs are not just a car story anymore, they are a technology, energy and investment revolution. So to summarize, the world is betting big on EVs for seven reasons. One, climate targets are forcing change. Two, batteries are cheaper. Three, countries want energy independence. 4. Auto industry is being disrupted. 5. Battery supply chains are the new oil. 6. Charging infra is now scaling. And 7. Markets are rewarding forward-looking companies. So as an investor, if you understand these 7 trends, you will know why this opportunity is so big. And in the next few episodes, we will go deeper into what makes a good EV company, what the risks are, and how to pick smart bets. In the next episode, we will talk about what actually makes an electric vehicle different. Not just on the surface, but deep inside, from the drivetrain to the battery chemistry to how they make money. This will help you judge whether you are investing in a car company or a software company in disguise. If this video helped clarify the big picture, drop a comment with what excites you the most about the EV sector. 